This is an example of a tank that's bioactive, not very naturalistic. This does not have any drainage layer because I'm not really too concerned about the plants. I'm just using that one plant that lives under almost any conditions and whenever it dies I can always replace it. This tank has a pair of crested geckos in it that are breeders and I want to keep it easy to get their eggs. So let me take out this piece of wood so I can show you what I mean. So there's one of the geckos hiding in the plant. That's the male, part of the male. And so when you get into the substrate, you can see all the little isopods lying around. So this is a mix of sand and pot top soil and cocoa fiber with leaf litter on top. I just want to be able to, if there's any eggs, to keep them moist and to feed the isopods and to be able to easily find the eggs without having to mess with a lot of plant roots. I'm not really doing an egg search right now. I just wanted to show you how it is full of isopods. So they eat the decaying leaf matter and they, apparently, the species I have in here don't eat the eggs. Okay, so there's the male. And over here, underneath here, is the female. And I just checked for eggs and didn't see any, but one of the advantages of this plant that I wanted to show you is that it stays alive in there without really attaching to the soil very much. So it's really easy to just pick it up, pick it down there, and check for eggs. There were not any eggs in there. So, and mostly what else I found in there for bugs was Suriname roaches, which provide very tasty snacks for these guys. This is a night shot of my bioactive leopard tank. As an arid setup, it doesn't have the drainage layer and the separation. It just has three different types of soil mixes. The bottom is a moist mix so that the isopods and stuff have places to go and not dry out. Then there's a mix that's mostly sand along with a little bit of cocoa fiber. And then the top mix is a mix of sand and clay, which there's various ways to make. You can buy the expensive stuff or you can grind up pure unscented clay cat litter in a blender. I kind of did a mix of both. And there's rocks, lots and lots of stacked rocks. It's hard to see because of the reflections. But the rocks are stacked up all the way from the bottom, so there's like five or six layers of stacked rocks with little caves in between, so there's plenty of room for geckos to hide. The tank is two foot by two foot wide. It's a square, a big square. And most of the time you can find the isopods and the roaches under the water bowl. I don't think I'm strong enough to lift that big bowl and film. Uh, to see what's down there. Nope, I can't do it. Anyway, I just, I mostly set this tank up for these guys to have more fun. There's buried PVC. They've kicked off a lot of the soil that I had over it. But the use, the use of the clay, when you moisten it a little bit, it makes it pretty solid. It makes like a crust so they're not ingesting sand which is one of the things that people are afraid of with keeping animals on substrate, especially if you just let the insects in there so they can hunt them. Now there's, I don't have a high enough level of bioactivity to actually take care of all the waste, but leopard geckos all pretty much go, choose, a, choose a corner to go to the bathroom in. They, they go to the bathroom right there in the front corner. And I do find the isopods eating that, but I periodically have to take it out. I didn't follow the advice to set up a tank and leave it alone for a month to let the isopods breed before putting the animals in because I needed the tank immediately. Anyway, this is just for fun. I'm going to put the crickets in because these guys are so funny. Here. And geckos should start to emerge from everywhere. 
And the most fun bioactivity with this tank has been how it encourages breeding. One time I picked up the water bowl and found two little babies under there hiding. And I found them in the skulls. They just appear and the parents don't bother them. And I try to catch them, which sometimes is hard because they can get way back in those multiple layers under all those rocks there where they've dug it out all the way down to the bottom of the tank. The substrate's probably three to four inches thick. There's five of them in here and they usually all come out once the food comes out, but I don't know that today we're going to see them all. Anyway, I just love these guys. They're so pretty. Everybody says, oh, that's just a common, you know, not a very interesting animal. It's just the first pet, but I just think they're fantastic. They're like little cats in lizard skin. Here I lifted the leopard gecko water bowl on leaves so that when I pick it up, I don't have to wash all that sand off it. And a second ago, I exposed a bunch of isopods, but they might have run off. Yeah, now there's two kinds in here. The, the roly-poly ones, that one I'm focusing on, they seem to do better in the arid setup than the little blue ones. Although I guess it looks like the little blue ones are breeding. There's babies. I haven't actually seen the leopard geckos try to eat them. They catch the roaches. I use the arid, arid um, Turkish roaches in here, but they don't last long. about a nice bioactive tank is that sometimes you can't ever see the animals that are in them. This morning the glass frog is still on the glass of his or her tank. I just hadn't seen him for a while. Sometimes I'm not sure he's even still alive. But there he is. This tank was not built by me. I don't do the backgrounds. I never have enough time. It's a beautiful tank. And apparently the frog likes it. But I need to put some fruit flies in pretty soon, but I don't dare touch it while he's on the door because he's tiny and fast. Looks almost like we're looking at him from the top, but that's his transparent little self. This is a tank that is natural but not bioactive. It started out with just a layer of dirt and cocoa fiber about a year ago and the inhabitant, my little Tibetan frog-eyed gecko, earth moves and excavates and bulldozes plants, destroys plants, there she is back there. She has made an incredible set series of burrows and underground hides in here. I set her up before I knew about isopods and I don't know why I haven't put any in here, but that's just another girl who's happier in sand than she would have been in a tank.